Solutions have variable composition. This means the solution may contain a lot of solute or just a little. To describe a solution well, you must define both the identity of the solute and solvent, as well as the relative proportions. Terms like dilute and concentrated allow us to describe the relative amounts qualitatively, but concentration allows us a much more precise definition. A concentration is a mathematical expression of the amount of solute in a given amount of solution. There are a variety of different expressions of solution concentration. These are some of the most common. Each is used for a different purpose. You must know how to calculate each one of these concentrations and convert between them. We'll start by discussing each of these concentration units separately. Molarity is one of the most common expressions of concentration that we use in chemistry. It is defined as the ratio of moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution. The unit is often expressed as a capital M. When you see this, it's important to remember that this simply stands for the ratio of moles per liter of solution. In contrast to molarity, molality is the ratio of moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Note that this is different in two very important respects. First, the denominator is defined in terms of amount of solvent, not total solution. Second, the amount of solvent is in kilograms, a measure of mass rather than volume. Because this is based on mass, not volume, the molality concentration does not vary with temperature. You should also note that the abbreviation for molality is lowercase m. Please be careful with concentration units and make sure you are clear on whether the m is lowercase or uppercase. The next common type of concentration unit actually comprises two parts, a ratio and a multiplier. The ratio expresses parts of solute in parts of solution. The parts can be measured either in mass units or volume units. Either way, the same units are used for both the denominator and the numerator. For example, in a parts by mass concentration, the ratio may be grams of solute per gram of solution or kilograms of solute per kilogram of solution. As long as the unit used on top and bottom are the same, the ratio will remain constant. The second part of the unit is a power of 10 multiplier. The most common multiplier is 100, in which case we call the unit percent by mass or percent by volume. If a solution is particularly dilute, the multiplier might be 10 to the power of 6 or 10 to the power of 9. In these cases, the unit is called parts per million or parts per billion. This is a particularly useful unit for dealing with dilute solutions. To use it, though, you must specify whether it's a parts by mass or parts by volume ratio, as well as the magnitude of the multiplier. The mole fraction is the fraction of the moles of one component in the total moles of all the components of the solution. It can actually be expressed as either the mole fraction of the solute or the solvent. In the mole fraction of the solute, the numerator is the moles of solute. In the mole fraction of the solvent, the numerator is the moles of solvent instead. In either case, the denominator will be the total moles or the sum of the moles of each component in the solution. So all solutes plus the solvent. The moles in the numerator and the denominator cancel out and the ratio is considered unitless. Let's do some sample calculations using these concentrations. Let's start by calculating the molarity for a solution made by dissolving 34 grams of ammonia in 2,000 milliliters of solution. As with all chemistry problems, we start by figuring out what we're given and what we're trying to find. In this case, we're given a mass of ammonia and a volume of solution. We're asked to calculate molarity. We also know the formula for molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. The units of what we're given do not match our formula, so first we must convert grams into moles. We do this by dividing our mass of ammonia by the molar mass of ammonia. Notice that grams cancel out, leaving us with moles. 
We also convert our milliliters of solution into liters by multiplying by 0.001 liters per one milliliter. This is the same as dividing uh, by 1,000 milliliters, and it gives us two liters of solution. We can now substitute our values for moles and liters into our formula for molarity, and we get 1.00 moles per liter of ammonia. Now let's calculate the molality of the same solution. To do this, we do need to have a density for that particular solution. So we start with the same amounts of our solute and solvent. Since we're solving for molality this time, we'll use the formula for molality. Again, we need moles of solute in the numerator, so our first step will, to be, will be to convert from grams of ammonia to moles of ammonia by dividing by the molar mass. Next, we need our denominator in units of mass. We'll convert our milliliters of solution into grams of solution first by multiplying by the density of that solution. Milliliters will cancel out, leaving us with grams. Our denominator needs to be in units of mass for solvent alone, though, not for solution. So we calculate the mass of the solvent alone by subtracting out from the mass of the solution the mass of the solute. 2,000 grams of solution minus 34 grams of our solute ammonia gives us 1.97 times 10 to the third grams of solvent, or 1,970 grams. We can then convert this into kilograms, which is the actual unit of mass we need for molality, by multiplying by one kilogram over 1,000 grams. Grams cancel out, leaving us with kilograms. Now we can substitute our values for moles of solute and kilograms of solvent into our molality formula, and we get a molality of 1.02. Let's calculate the percent by mass of the same solution. Again, we start with what we are given and what we're trying to find. We'll use the formula for percent by mass this time, the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution times 100. Since we already have the mass of the solute, ammonia, in grams, we only need to convert the volume of the solution into grams using the density. 2,000 milliliters times 1 gram per milliliter gives us 2,000 grams of solution. We substitute this into our formula for percent by mass, and we find that we have a 1.7 percent by mass solution of ammonia. Now let's calculate the mole fraction of ammonia in this solution. Again, we start with our mass of ammonia and our volume of solution. Mole fraction for the solute ammonia is the ratio of the moles of ammonia divided by the total moles of solution. In this case, we only have two components in our solution, our solute ammonia and our solvent water. So the total moles must be equal to the moles of ammonia plus the moles of water. We start by calculating the moles of ammonia by dividing by the molar mass of ammonia. To calculate the total moles of solution, we're also going to need to find the moles of water. To do this, we start with converting the volume of solution into mass of solution using the density. We then subtract out the mass of ammonia from the mass of solution to give us the mass of just water alone. 1.97 times 10 to the third grams. Once we have the mass of water alone, we can easily convert this into moles of water by dividing by the molar mass of water, 18.02 grams. This gives us 109.1 .1 moles of just water. Now we can use this along with the moles of ammonia to calculate mole fraction. 2.00 moles of ammonia on top divided by our total moles of solution, which is 2.00 moles of ammonia plus 109.1 .1 moles of water. This will give us 0 0.0180 for our mole fraction for the solution. In addition to calculating concentration directly from a description of the solution,
you should also be able to convert from one concentration unit to another. There are several general steps I can guide you through with this type of problem. First, you need to write out the starting concentration as a ratio. You'll separate this into numerator and denominator for your calculations. You'll convert the solute part in the numerator into the required numerator unit on the concentration you're solving for. Then you'll convert the denominator into the required denominator unit on your final concentration. Finally, you plug the new numerator and denominator into the formula for concentration that you're solving for. Let's look at this in action. What is the molarity of a 6.55% by mass glucose solution? You're given the molar mass of glucose here, as well as the density of the solution. Our starting concentration is percent by mass, and we're trying to find molarity. Let's first write these as ratios to make it easier to see the conversions we must do. A percent is always out of 100, so one easy way to write a percent as a ratio is with 100 as the denominator. Here, 6.55% is the same as 6.55 grams of glucose per every 100 gram of solution. The ratio we'll convert this into is moles of solute, or glucose, per liter of solution. Let's start with the numerator. To convert 6.55 grams of glucose into moles of glucose, we just need to divide by the molar mass of glucose. Our grams cancel out, leaving us with 0.03636 moles of glucose. For the denominator, we can use the density to convert grams of solution into liters of solution. The grams will cancel out, We'll just need to do an additional conversion from milliliters to liters to get 0.09709 liters. We now have our numerator and denominator in the correct units. All we have to do is plug them into the formula for molarity, and we find that a 6.55% by mass glucose solution has a 0.374 mole per liter concentration. Let's do one more example. Molality conversions can be a little more tricky because the denominator describes the mass of the solvent alone. We'll usually have to account for this in our denominator conversion. So let's calculate the molality of a 16.2 molar sulfuric acid solution. To write the 16.2 molar concentration as a ratio, we set it over 1. This is an easy way to put a single number into ratio form. The units for the numerator and denominator come from the molarity formula, moles of solute over liters of solution. We need to convert this into molality, which is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. If we look at the numerator, we'll notice that we already have moles of solute as our numerator, so we don't need to do a numerator conversion here. The denominator needs to be converted from liters to kilograms and from solution to just solvent, however. Let's start by using the density of the solution to convert from liters of solution to grams of solution. We convert liters to milliliters and milliliters to grams, and we get 1,800 grams of solution. This mass represents the mass of both the solvent, water, and the solute, sulfuric acid. Since we need the mass of just the solvent, we need to subtract out the mass of the sulfuric acid. We'll have to calculate the mass of the sulfuric acid to do this. We're given moles, not grams. This is an easy conversion, though. Just multiply the moles of sulfuric acid by the molar mass of sulfuric acid. The moles will cancel out and will be left with 1,589 grams. We can now subtract the mass of sulfuric acid from the mass of the solution to get just the mass of water. 211 grams of water or 0.211 kilograms. Finally, we plug our moles of sulfuric acid and our kilograms of water into our formula for molality and find that the solution concentration is 77 molal with respect to sulfuric acid.